So similar to the video we made earlier today, we got two new weapons added into Warzone and they're actually from Vanguard this time. And this video is going to be all about the M1 Garand and we're going to be comparing it to weapons that are similar inside its category to see if it stands out or if it's going to be like the new DMR for example. If you enjoy weapon stat breakdowns and weapon comparisons, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as we're trying to reach our goal of 10,000 subscribers and click that link in the description down below and subscribe to our second channel. We do post extra gameplay content over there as well. And like I said, this video is all about this M1 Garand. Now, I'm going to quickly explain how you can get this gun. It's pretty straightforward to be completely honest, especially if you have the battle pass. If you have the battle pass, all you need to do is level it up and you will get these guns as you progress. Um, so the M1 Garand comes in two blueprint models and you can only use them in blueprint models you can't use the base weapon or get your own attachments for these guns and to be honest with you i don't think these are like the meta builds um for these weapons anyway uh, i think they've done it kind of on purpose like that but as you can see you definitely get more than the five attachments we're used to anyways and you can get up to 10 attachments on the vanguard weapons now that's not really going to make them any more overpowered or underpowered um, once you try these weapons, you actually find that out for yourself pretty quickly. All this is just going to mean is the fact that these weapons are going to be a bit more niche depending on how you build them. Uh, so they might be like a kind of faster sniper rifle or they'll be like a sniper support uh, assault rifle, that kind of thing. Uh, but when it comes to the M1 Garand, this blueprint right here is the white obsidian one. This is the one we actually did all of our testing on because this is the first one you unlock and this is the one we have unlocked. If you do go slightly further up in the battle pass at like tier 71, 72, you do get another one. So you get this one here, the heirloom. And this one is looking like the kind of more long range option of it, to be completely honest. You get the, the foregrip on it, you get the scope, and you've also got the stabilizer, which might help with idle sway and things like that. Um, so this looks like the more kind of long range option. But like I said, we did all of our testing on the previous blueprint. So on screen just now, what you'll see is the damage and TTK values for the M1 Garand, the DMR-14, the FAL and the Type 63 because these are all very similar assault rifles. And to be completely honest, the DMR is probably one of the best semi-automatic rifles along with the FAL. And then the ones that are inside Modern Warfare, things like the SKS, the EBR, are not so great to be completely honest. So that's why I'm comparing it to these two guns mainly. And then we just added the Type 63 for a bit of fun, to be completely honest. Um, so what we have here is the M1 Garand. The rate of fire is 411, uh, and that is the max cap rate of fire. And then we've got the same for the other weapons right next to their names as well. The damage profile across all of these guns is actually quite different, to be completely honest. Um, so the M1 Garand is probably very close to the damage profile of the DMR. It has a little bit more headshot damage and a little bit less uh, everywhere else, more or less. Um, and then we've got a different damage profile for the FAL. So as you can see, it does less headshot damage um, and again, less uh, stomach shot and body shot damage overall. The type has the highest damage when it comes to stomach shots and limb shots and all that kind of stuff. And it kind of sits in between the FAL and the DMR when it comes to headshots. But these two weapons do have the slightly faster rate of fire as well. So you definitely need to keep that in mind. Then when it comes to chest shot TTKs only, as you can see, the M1 Garand and the Type 63 have the faster close range TTK. Um, when it comes to long range TTKs, the FAL is the best weapon actually. And then the DMR is probably a close second. Then we've got the Type and then the M1 Garand. So it's actually got the slower uh, TTK at long range when it comes to chest shots only. Now using our mixed shot location TTK values, you can see that you do still get a very similar TTK uh, across the board besides long range when it comes to the DMR. So if you do land a single headshot in the mix uh, and the rest are all extremity shots, you're not really going to be doing so well with the DMR. Um, and every other weapon is pretty consistent to be completely honest. So that is how they kind of nerf the DMR for those longer ranges. And the M1 Garand is not so great at long range either. The Type 63 actually kills the quickest. Uh, and then the FAL is actually a close second there as well. Um, so this gun is not really overpowered in any way when it comes to damage profiles or even TTK values. Uh, so as you can see, it's not going to be overpowered. So on screen just now, you will see the handling stats for all of these weapons. We don't really know what the base stats will be for the Vanguard guns because we don't have access to them right now. 
um, and we don't know what the meta builds would be for these weapons either and the stats for those so like i said these are just the stats we can calculate from what we have at the moment and i'll give you the builds for the fal and type 63 uh, and the dmr that we tested as well so for the reload times as you can see the type uh, and the dmr come out on top as the quickest but at those longer ranges this doesn't really matter too much plus there's not a huge difference in reload time mag sizes um, are pretty much the same across the board i think they will be more or less the same bullet velocity on the m1 garand is about 630 uh, the dmr with the build that we used which is using the uh, strike team barrel which is the one that gives you the faster fire rate um is 657 the fal has the fastest bullet velocity and the type 63 is 673 now you can use the task force barrel or the equivalent of and that will give you faster bullet velocity on the cold war weapons but again that's going to increase your recoil so i don't really think that's going to help too much with these kind of guns here so that's why semi-auto rifles are not that popular ads time is pretty standard across the board the fal is actually the quickest uh, but again, this is not really too important at those really long ranges. It's only going to be a factor at close range. So again, just to quickly recap, these are the builds that we tested. So for the M1 Garand, it was the white obsidian blueprint we used, which is the first one you unlock. For the DMR, we actually used this build right here. It's actually the titanium barrel we used. I totally forgot what it was called, but this is the one that gives you the faster fire rate uh, and cons your damage range, which is not really too important. Um, but you also use the agency silencer, axial arms, 30 round mags, field agent foregrip and like I said the reason why we don't use the task force is because it increases your recoil. So again we use a similar build on the type 63, so GRU suppressor, titanium barrel again, axial three times, 30 round mags and we use the VDV grip because I haven't actually unlocked the Spetsnaz grip yet. And then lastly for the FAL we use the mono suppressor, the marksman barrel which is the longest barrel, VLK optic, 30 round mags and the commando foregrip. So what we have here is the M1 Garand and for some reason when you fire this weapon it doesn't actually show any tracers but I am hitting the max fire rate and as you can see it goes to up to about here uh, in terms of vertical recoil on this wall when I was firing it and um, it wasn't showing tracers which is a bit annoying or the bullet impact so from about there is where the kind of fire rate was so let's see how high the DMR goes when you fire that. So the DMR goes up and off the screen whereas the M1 Garand was definitely up to about here or something like that so it's actually not as much vertical recoil with the M1 Garand but like I said I can't give you like an accurate comparison because the bullet impacts are not actually even shown on the screen but I'll try and fire the weapon again with the max fire rate just to show you where it kind of stops and like I said where I marked it with that DMR that is exactly where it stops. Now, do I think this gun is overpowered or broken in any way? Not really, but of course, we don't really have the meta builds at the moment. So maybe once we do get those meta builds, we'll notice that it actually has much less recoil, is way easier to control, um, and that therefore that will make it a bit more overpowered. But in terms of like the damage values and stuff like that, it doesn't really look overpowered at the moment. So if you enjoyed this video and you learned something new, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as we try to reach our goal of 10,000 subscribers. And click that link in the description down below and subscribe to our second channel. We do post extra content over there as well. And thank you very much for watching.